All right, so we have a double podcast today. This is truly miraculous. Um, so anyway, science says that gays uh, are gender shifted towards the feminine. I've been saying this forever. Uh, chapter three in Grero is where you can look up the references for it. So that's one premise. Uh, however, in Grero, I also say many times uh, also that straight acting, um, the people in the gay community who say that they're a little more masculine, uh, I've, I've said that that's not very convincing, and I think that they're just a lot of those people are just fooling themselves. Uh, in the thread, I also uh, I'm going to include a funny video by a gay guy who pretty much makes the same point. Now we then have a problem though, is if we're going to say that gay is sort of feminine, and that the people in the gay community who say they're kind of masculine or masculine fully, that they're fooling themselves. Well, what about Vero? I mean, just because we make up a new word, how do we know? we're not fooling ourselves. You know, how do we know we're not delusional? And that is a very good question, and that's a question I myself have thought about. And here are, I mean, here's my personal observations. It has to be on a personal level, because even if Grero makes sense on a kind of broad abstract level, that most men who are more or less masculine have a capacity to be attracted to other men, you still have to bring it back to you personally. Okay, as to what about me? You know, we can't just look at Achilles and say, you know, he kicked ass and chewed bubble gum. And uh, uh, what about me? So, uh, you know, I have, I have a couple of thoughts about this, at least on a personal level. When boys are young, they are, oh, that's a mosquito. That's disgusting. I'm all bloody. Uh, so anyways, when boys are young, oh, damn mosquitoes, to edit that one out, son of a bitch. So anyways, when, when boys are young, uh, they are what is known as uh, homosocial. And what that means is they play with members of their own sex. Not, it's, it's not nothing sexual, it's social. It's they like to interact with other boys. And you kind of see this at least in this culture. Uh, gay boys, on the other hand, are pre-gay boys. Those who will later turn out to be um, um, feminine are quite the opposite. Okay, so they are not homosocial, they like to play with little girls because they identify with them. Now, I didn't have any dolls, I played with Legos, I played with other boys, rough and tumble play, rough housing, you know, that kind of stuff. There was one exception though, and I think it actually proves the rule. In fourth grade, a lot of the boys in the class, they started playing soccer, and by soccer, what they meant was let's kick each other in the shins and then argue about it. And I kind of got tired of that very quickly. So what I did was I went over to, to the girls and started playing with them. However, uh, it was more like the girls, I kind of forced them to play with me. I told them we're going to play kickball and we're going to pick teams and that's what we're doing. And, you know, some of the guys came over as well, but that's, you know, I basically made the girls play something that they would never have done themselves. So I think that proves the, the difference or it proves my point. Um, speaking of difference, uh, there's a book called The Essential Difference. It is by It was written by Borat's cousin. Uh, Borat, the guy who plays uh, Borat, has an actual neuroscientist cousin. His name is Simon Baron Cohen. And he wrote a book, uh, The Essential Difference, Male and Female Brains, The Truth About Autism. Uh, and of course, if you put autism on the cover of a book, it sells out. So that's why he had to do that. But he also had some interesting things uh, uh, to, to say about it. His basic point is that the male brain is systemizing more, I mean, it's, it's not absolute, but it tends to be more systemizing, whereas the female brain is more empathizing. Okay. Now, I, I, I have a statistic, and I think it's included in Grero. I don't know if it is, but you can look it up somewhere. 98% uh, of the startups in Silicon Valley are done by men. Okay, so 98% of the founders in Silicon Valley are men. And, you know, you could say, oh, well, they're biased and, oh, my goodness, all that nonsense. The, the only problem with that is, is Silicon Valley and technology in particular are really the freest fields and the ones that are least biased. Uh, because you don't really have to ask permission. You can just start a company. I mean, I, this is where it comes down personally is I started a company. I didn't meet up with any of the people that I worked with. Okay. Nobody knew what I looked like. I mean, I, I did have some photos online, but nobody, nobody really would have checked. You know, it's not like, oh, you're a woman. Well, you can't work here. You know, none of that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, I, I started a business like that and 
the question is, why aren't there women? It's clearly not bias. Well, it's because a lot of what making a website and running a business is, it's tinkering. And that is what systemizing is. Um, so that's another little point. Uh, the third one, I think it's a little bit, you know, kind of stereotypical, but it's true. Whenever I go to Lowe's to buy something, uh, screws or some little things that, you know, I, I, I try to fix stuff around the house, so, sometimes successfully even. But whenever I go there and I try to buy something, I end up like looking at the lawnmowers. I end up looking at um, the electronic stuff. You know, just, just, I don't need it, but I just like, end up like, oh, this is fun to look at. Let me look at lawnmowers. It's like, what the hell is that? And I think that is that goes along with the whole systemizing thing. You have a bunch of similar objects that are kind of similar. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's just something to look at. I've never seen too many women do I, I don't see too many people doing that, so maybe it's just some odd behavior on my part. But I'd never see women doing that. Or you, you never see uh, women um, waxing cars. Like you drive by and there's a guy washing his car and then waxing it and then spending an hour or two uh, just, just cleaning it up. You never see women doing that. You never see women doing that. You never see women detailing their cars. That attention to detail, that systemizing, you just don't see it. So anyways, that's all I have to say about that. And, uh, you know, see you next time.